happy to be here and to kick off the uh, Stevensville Board of Adjustment meeting, March 9. And um, first of all, we need to consider the approval of the January 12, 2023 minutes. Do I ever do I hear a, uh, a motion? So moved. Do Second. Understand? Thank you very much. All right, so we'll move to the public hearing, and we're going to, going to first... Need to vote on that, Mr. Chair. Oh, okay. Yeah, you're right. I'm a little flustered. That's fine. Uh, no, okay. I'm a, that's All fine. in favor, say aye. 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 None opposed. Very good. Now we'll open the public hearing. Steve, would you introduce to us case number B2023-002? Yes, sir. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Applicant Tom Hines is representing Christopher Family Living Trust. Uh, they are requesting a variance from 154.21.3C for the construction of a carport. This is at 945 Mockingbird at Tanglewood Edition Block A, Lot 6, North 88 of, of the City of Stephenville, Erath County, Texas. Uh, Mr. Hines is requesting a variance for the construction of the carport. Carport will extend about 11.5 feet into the required front setback. Um, if approved, the 25-foot front setback requirement will be reduced to 13.5 feet. Um, in your staff report, we included the zoning requirements for R1 uh, residential. And paragraph, or I'm sorry, item 5 says minimum depth of front setback is 25 feet. We also included section 154.21.3C um, regarding the process for the variance of a construction of a carport. Paragraph one, if this carport met all of those conditions, we could approve it without a public hearing. It does not meet A2. Um, the carport is not within the minimum setback, so we have to have a public hearing and we did have to have a a publication of the hearing which is uh, somewhat unique compared to some of the other cases we hear regarding variances alone uh, for setbacks so with the carport it actually requires that we publish the meeting um, I was unaware of that so I had to ask Mr. Hines to let me delay this from February until March and he was agreeable to that after visiting with this client um, so uh, I appreciate your patience on that, Mr. Hines. Y'all may know Mr. Hines from uh, Planning and Zoning Commission. Uh, he served on the commission last year. Um, he has provided us a, a, a packet with a lot of information. And if you would work towards the back of the packet, uh, we do have um, a survey of the property. And then he has included renderings, including front images of the property uh, the proposed carport, which will be a two-car covered carport, uh, which will be in front of a storage area connected to the structure itself. And then on the next to the last page of your packet, he has uh, some renderings of how this will look on the property itself. And then the last page has a basically a floor plan of the of the home, where the carport will be. Uh, he's given us dimensions on how far the carport will extend out. Again, that's 11.5 feet. Uh, he's given us a view from the east of the property and also an aerial uh, rendering as well. Uh, I have received uh, three phone calls uh, inquiring about this case. Uh, none of which wanted to provide any type of written correspondence or attend the meeting to speak in favor or opposition. Um, all were agreeable to the project after we discussed what it involved. So uh, with that, Mr. Chairman, I'd be glad to answer any questions. Very good. And you said that the city has no objections to this. Uh, we support the request and do want to make a note that um, Mr. Hines had provided a document to me that I wasn't comfortable putting out on the internet, so he has provided that to you for review as a handout. Very good. Thank you, sir. Mr. Hines, do you want to come up and to the podium and just introduce yourself? And um, because we are recording, and we can address any questions to you. Thank you. I am Tom Hines, 920 Sundown, Stephenville. 
and I am an architect representing the owner. Um, we can go through this briefly, this handout, which is the narrative for the application we're trying to justify. Um, the, just bring up the page one of the exhibit, which would be six or five, yeah. Keep going. Keep going. There you go. There's a brief history, and I want to thank everybody for coming, and I appreciate your time. Um, this house was purchased in 2016 by the Christophers because it has only a four-inch step at the front porch, which made it easier for access to go in and out of the building. Um, since Mr. and Mrs. Dr. and Mr. Christopher were both in their early 80s, the garage pictured on page two, which is the next page, don't, <coughs> don't, don't bring it up yet, um, was enclosed before they bought the house <coughs> the house owner. Don't know how long it had been it enclosed. But several life-changing events happened after they purchased the house. Miss, Mrs. Christopher passed away. And Dr. Christopher was asked to release his office at Tarleton after 59 years of teaching and consulting um, and collecting books and memorabilia and papers. And his youngest daughter, who has a disability, came to live with him for care and attention. So planning for the longevity, Dr. Christopher's son, Randall, and his oldest sister started making plans, a strategy on how to modify the house for aging in place. And there are four priorities, and we'll talk about two of them, this. The first priority was to add a covered carport, storage room, and covered walk to the front door from this parking area. Page two. <clears throat> well, that, that won't work that, Mr. Well, okay. No. So, this left, no, go back. This left hand, number one, is a survey provided by Matthew Price in May of last year, and it shows the existing conditions on the property. The front setback <coughs> is by the plat of the Tanglewood addition. So, theoretically, I can't change that because it's the whole neighborhood, that's our plot. But the setback lines on the side and the back were set by the restrictive covenants for Tanglewood was put together. So two are the same conditions as one oriented to the street, showing the front setback line at 25 feet and the side and rear setback lines per the zoning ordinance, <coughs> which is what's enforced. Um, if we go to the next page, This, we, we added the solutions on three, four, and five that are in your packet, hold this. Um, provides cover over the parking area from the rain to the house. Provides lighting and a pathway from the carport back into the house. And the covered second car we'll show is important for caregivers who come by and provide services with the family members who will come by and bring groceries and visit. So right now, there's, there's, there's you see it out in the rain. Um, the storage unit will provide temporary housing for most of the materials in the garage, which is accumulation of, and during the remodel phase and then ongoing seasonal storage. It's important to note that ranch style homes of the 60s, 70s, and 80s had very little storage except for bedroom closets. The garage right now is a depository for all the materials that came in from his office. So you can imagine it's, it's full of books, papers, and, and, and uh, research. Um, the second priority of the garage is to convert the garage into a study 
for some of the many volumes of books and papers in the collection of his 37 years of teaching and 22 years of active, 22 active years in research and writing. Currently, the garage is a depository for many of the books, papers, and materials removed from his office at Tarleton. And work on the garage cannot begin until we have a safe place to store the materials, transfer them out, store the materials. Okay, so we've seen the page. This shows from Mockingbird Street, you can see the, cover, the garage is enclosed, so there's no cover. And then you can see the step at the front porch, which is the only issue in getting into the house, which is, really was not an issue when they bought it. Next page. So what you see here on slide three, you have the covered parking, the yellow line or orange line, the yellow line is the front yard setback. So the columns are behind the setback line, but the, the roof extends over for a second cover. We have the storage, we have the covered block area, um, from the covered storage area to of uh, carport area to the front door, we have two seating areas and we have new paving. Next. <coughs> this is the same slide, but it's showing the dimensions with related to the house and the front yard setback. And so you can see how far the roof extends over, but you can see that the columns of the building are behind the setback. Okay. These are the pictures that a concept view of what we think this is going to look like. And it'll be pretty close. So you can see the seating area on the left hand side. This is from the, the southwest corner, the neighbor's front yard. Two is up a little closer where you can see the seating area and tucked behind that little opening there is the covered walk in the seating area on the back side that's hidden from the street. These two views here show pretty much how the roof hangs over, but the columns are behind the setback. Next. Up on the right, you can see the covered walk coming from the storage building over to the front door. We're also taking out the walk and putting in a ramp so there will be no step. You just walk right up a wheelchair, not a problem. Um, so we have the storage building, we have the covered park, we have the hidden seating and the covered walk. And then the bottom is an aerial view of the site plan that you see over on the left. So the covered seating is not, I mean, it's actually not covered? That's correct. Okay. Did the come? <laughs> no, they want it, they want it to be outside. Any questions? Yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> when I when I first drove by that lot, I thought obviously that it had been enclosed for some time, you know, yes. judging from the exterior. But if you, and this may not be the right way to describe it, but if you installed a traditional carport and did away with that small seating area in front of the what was the garage door and set the carport there, would you be able to accommodate the two vehicles there without having to go for the variance and without encroaching on the setback? Well, we can answer your question. <coughs> The next phase, once the carport is built, is to go inside the now garage 
and convert it to a study and library. They want to add windows, so we rebuild that wall and add windows to the inside where you can see out. Convert it, and that's and those windows are what you see in, sh in picture number nine mm -hmm. and in picture number seven and picture number eight. So those putting windows up, would be facing west, I think. Actually, um, southwest. Towards the street. It's, it's towards the street. Yes, okay. So there's, and then the seating area would be in front. Okay. <clears throat> so putting anything up that would be covered would actually create a dark spot over those windows. Okay. And so that's why. Um, in order to open that up, which is what we're showing on nine, um, which gives him a library and a place to study and bring people in and conduct. Um, the first time I was there at the house last year, he had a student from Tarleton over there working with her. I think she was a doctoral student. But this gives him a place where we can get most of the books because the inside of the house has books and we can put about 2100 books in the shelving that you see that's around this plan and then there's filing in there where you can create papers so although to answer your question that's possible and we've looked at it but it but it closes off that opportunity to open up that front well you wouldn't have as much space on the drive. That's true. Both cars pulled up next to each other. If there's a wheelchair involved, Can't there's not enough space. Can't right. get them out. I think my question wasn't about that covered seating or not covered. Mine is about the back side. The one that has three chairs. Yes. Next to the storage. And it seems what so there's no way to move everything up in the on the diagram to where it goes into that area for seating and and is flush with the, the line of the house and an in, entrance to that well, creating creating the storage and also to create a space for living so there's a lot of iterations that we looked at and still trying to solve the problem um, if it, it's difficult to put all the pieces together, especially at Kratom Storage, where they can get access and be able to have turnaround space. Right now, they can get out and turn around and go out to the street. To change up that where you're going to put that seating area or eliminate it creates an encroachment area on the front door. If, if the seating area wasn't there on the left, the, fr the, the, the one that's on yes. the, the first one, and it was just a matter of covered parking, then it, all, both cars could fit there, it wouldn't, in, it wouldn't impede anything, but then could the storage not be where the three seats are on an, outs, on an uncovered area? Like, could that not become storage? Well. A, we got the trees. There's another tree that we don't see. That's a much bigger tree. So we have a problem just trying to, if we did that and parked the car perpendicular to this, to it would be difficult without a lot more paving to have accessible and not contend with the trees. I know you don't see that because the other tree is not there. Um, but. Um, the problem, the, the, the problem that we had in looking at this was um, how to create a space where they can go out and sit, and if they want to, I can get a wheelchair in and out of there, and I can make it easy for accessibility without creating any um, difficulty in, in, in just getting property in and out. So we looked at that. But I couldn't park there. I couldn't park there 
I could. Um, the other thing is that that storage unit blocks the street view of that seating area, so that creates a little privacy for them. But is the the, the proposed storage is that not a garage right now? Excuse me. Isn't the proposed thing that will become storage a garage part? No, garage? it is not built no. yet. The, oh. I don't think you have the storage yet, right? That's in the proposal, the storage building as well? Or does the storage building exist already? There's no storage building. Okay. No, all the, all the materials are in the garage. That'll, that can close garage. <clears throat> so that, that block there that says storage on the plan is the new storage area where we'll move everything out of the garage once that's complete to do the garage to convert that to a library. And the, in, on that diagram, where is the current garage? Just to okay. right there. That's what I thought. Okay. All right. So my question is, how important is the storage area? I know from when you're remodeling the, I'm not going to call it the garage, the study is what I'm going to call it because that's what it will be eventually. And I realize you've got to move all that stuff out to redo that room, but how important is the storage building in the future? Could you not cut that down to a wall that gives them privacy and supports the end of the carport? And I realize that they'd have a hard time if they pulled all the way down to it, but that would cut out, if you cut four feet out of that storage building and just did a wall there, you'd be much closer to within the limits. You understand what I'm saying? So instead of the storage building, you just have a, a support wall at the end that blocks in that little area with the three chairs and I moves. Have, I don't, there's no storage in the house. The store, the house already Okay, has. and that's, that's kind of what I was asking was yeah. how important is that storage building to them? Right okay. now, Randall, who's on Zoom, has items over at his house. Okay. <laughs> and, um, the house is the house is full. I mean, of books. He has a lot of books and paperwork, and it's full, and it makes it difficult to get around. Okay. Um, the storage is important because we're going to have an air conditioner in there that'll keep that thing reasonably cool, so not hotter than 80 and not colder than 40, where there's a lot of items for seasonal items that they can change and put clothes and other things in there. Um, and um, the library is going to have furniture that, that is not there. You're going to come in that they already have, plus the books. And then there'll be books in the house that'll go in there. So from an accessibility standpoint, which is where we are with them, is we need to create the space okay. so they can, and then you can get in and out of there without a problem if there's something that they have to put in there or take away, but they'll be able to have better access in the house. I just don't understand one thing. Why can't the storage go where the three uncovered seatings are? Seating is, and then the two car carport be diagonal, moved diagonally to where it's easier to drive in and cut and park right. and, and and it wouldn't affect i mean i wouldn't imagine that the set the setback the variance would need to be even near. this study right there is a bedroom with a window in it and so you're going to take that out and make it three seats that are uncovered well i have to have access to the bedroom for fire all bedrooms have to have windows. So you can have emergency access in the case, in the case there's a fire, by code. So, if, so, I couldn't come in and get a permit and close that window. But if you're moving, if you're creating a storage that's, won't that presumably have a window? So, how would that be any different from? How would it? prohibit you from doing that, you would still be creating a window or an outlet, an exit. Into what? Outside. Well, but I can't change that. 
I, I don't believe he's planning on putting a window in the storage building. No. This so if he moves the storage building up, he'd have to put a window in it, or he couldn't do it because he's got to have that window that's right between those two chairs. You can't change that window. Yeah. This is where the air conditioning is going to be. There's no windows in that building. And that, along with all the windows, this bedroom, this bedroom, that bedroom back there, are fire exits. Is emergency exits by code. So if if we move this or change this, I create a problem getting in and out. Any other questions? Mr. Hicks. The code also is going to limit how close that building can be. And so um, and still maintain the access. And that was going to be my question. Have you looked at fire and EMS access when you put the storage and the carport in there to the front door and to that south so part of the house? Here's the covered walk. This is all same grade. Okay. This is all same grade. This ramps up so there's access all the way around here, access across there. And we can get the stretcher turned around, get it under there, there's four and a half feet there, and, and get in and out of the door. Okay, and, and it's hard to tell from some of the drawings about the dimensions, uh, but I know that those stretchers are about, what, six or six and a half foot long, and but you have to have room to maneuver those. Yeah. And I, I was concerned about that because of that narrow walkway that went in and made that 90 degree turn. Well, what's happened here Mr. Dix, as we move this wall, we shorten. Um, this does not reflect the, where it is right now, but we did have to move this wall back. So I do have plenty of space under the cover. Okay. Under the cover to go in and out, turn a gurney with people with, and still be under cover. And be able to stay under cover and get into the house and bring them back out. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> Any other questions from the board? All right. Thank you very much, Mr. Hines. I appreciate it. And do we have anyone from the community here to speak to this request? Yeah, open them. We have someone on Zoom who would oh. like to speak. Okay. And they've they've done the appropriate big trip now. Okay. And they need to. I guess we'll get to see them here in a second. There we go. Oh, Mr. Christopher, you go ahead and introduce yourself, and then if you want to speak to this request. Hi, I'm uh, Randall Christopher, Joe Christopher's son. Um, I, quite frankly, I didn't really plan on uh, speaking except to answer questions if you had any. Uh, so that's really where I was coming from. Yeah. Um, you know, um, I appreciate uh, Mr. Hines answering uh, a lot of those questions there. <laughs> um, we have certainly gone through many iterations and discussions on, on uh, trying to design this. So, um, I appreciate it. But uh, really, I just, you know, we're just trying to, to get the house set up for dad so that he can uh, continue in his intellectual pursuits and uh, hopefully age in the house uh, long term. And that's, uh, that's where we're at at this point. Thank you very much. Any questions right. for Mr. Christopher from the board? No, sir. All right, thank you so much, and um, thank we'll, you. you're welcome. We'll go ahead and close the public hearing, and um, next order of business, do I hear a motion regarding this variance request, B2023-002? Mr. 
Chair, there seems to be a reluctance to make a motion on this. Mm -hmm. I, I understand what Mr. Hines is trying to do, and I understand the reasons now significantly better than I did. Uh, and there, there may be other ways to solve this, but it appears to me they've done a significant amount of diligence on this, trying to come up with something that will fit all the circumstances that they're trying to accommodate. Mm -hmm. As you know, I'm not generally in favor of variances, but this is one of those that I think is one that's going to be beneficial for the owner. Very. And apparently there haven't been any complaints, questions, concerns voiced by neighboring property owners. Uh, with all those things in mind, I would make the motion to approve variance number 2023-002 from the front yard setback to allow the construction of the proposed storage facility and carport. Thank you very much. Do I hear a second? I second. Thank you so much. Any discussion? In all um, transparency, I am a colleague of Joe Christopher's, a very dear um, colleague. He's been a, someone I've known since I've moved to Tarleton State since in 2006. So um, just I'm not, I'm not quite sure how I might need to, to handle this. If, I mean, I'm happy to um, um, recuse myself if, if you guys think that would be the right thing um, to do, but, um, but I'll de defer to you. I don't believe there's any legal ramification okay. as far as you recusing yourself, but if you feel better to abstain, uh, you can choose to abstain from the vote. Let me ask this. If I do abstain, does the alternate get to vote or no? Um, we we need four yeah. and we need 75 percent of those attending the meeting to be able to actually um, pass okay. the recommendation so you, you she would be voting as well as i think right so i understand okay. yeah tech is We're good going. all right very good any other discussion I personally see no problem with you voting, Mr. Chair, because you're not, you don't have a monetary concern in this. That's right. true. That's, true. Uh, that's, that's my opinion. It's not a legal opinion. Yeah. Uh, friendship is, is an issue, but it, there, you have no monetary concern one way or the other. And I, I, I appreciate that, and I also have some integrity. I think I can judge very fairly on this matter, and, and um, so I, I, I don't have any crisis of conscience. I just wanted to make it clear known that, yeah, le that legally we're both uh, in the same department of english and languages and he's now retired he's an emeritus he's very well respected and uh, we've had many many um, uh, uh, events that we've done together and things like that i just wanted it to be known for the record that that's the your case. prerogative mr chair then i'll vote um, so let's uh, call the question all in favor of this request for a variance to be approved all in favor say aye. 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 All right. Well, then it's it's a unanimous. Yeah, it unanimous. Um, having seen no other uh, business on the agenda, uh, <coughs> I move that we adjourn. I want to personally thank all of you for your service, not just because of voting for this. You know, having sat on P and Z for 16 months. I can appreciate the pros and cons of looking at things and trying to be uh, unbiased in, in what's in the best interest of the city and the taxpayers. So thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. You've obviously put a significant amount of work into this, trying to trying to fit and accommodate their needs. I appreciate that. And thanks to Mr. Christopher, if he's still there, um, give my love to Joe. All right, so we do have another meeting. Did that did, did, did that work out? I need to act on your motion to adjourn. Oh, did, anyone, uh, did, did I hear a second to adjourn? Second. All right. I, everyone in favor, please say aye. Okay, good. Uh, we're, we're, we're adjourned.